Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the single player let's play series here in Enigmatica 6. Uh, as you can probably tell right off the bat we have been busy. Uh, if you've been watching the VODs that I've been uploading to YouTube you have probably noticed that I've been doing a lot of building and that's just because I really struggle to build when I'm um, on camera and not kind of talking about it. It's, it's hard to describe but I really just build best whenever I have um, you know, people who can collaborate with me in real time and can chat and can, can speak out. So if you're interested, if you want to go catch those streams when they happen, you can follow me over on twitch.tv slash oh, it's just Jose. Uh, there's also a link down in the description. Anyways, we have built basically a, a similar, not really a replica, as you can probably tell, but we've built a similar version of this guy, this big building here, which we're using for uh, industrial foregoing and all of our uh, latex production, which is going really marvelously. We're using this area um, specifically for this, right? Well, we have a grid over here now, which I wired up in between streams and episodes. And on top of that, uh, you'll notice the design is is odd, right? So we have two, two, three, two, two, two. But then this way is also odd because it's two, three, and then two. What you'll notice is this build over here, I slightly designed differently in a couple of ways, first of all. It is even. It is twos all the way through, except for the, the length of it is odd. And I also did these cool, I think they're cool, I did these cool little elevated wall dividers. That way we have little spaces, little nooks to put our stuff in. I don't know about you, but nooks really make things feel like they have a home, they have a reason to be there. Especially because in, in modded, a lot of mod blocks kind of go well with each other. For example, these two. Uh, one of the other things that I did... Aside from getting everything moved over here, right? So we have our, our power energizing setup, we have our magmators, and we also have, if I dig down here, actually should have dug down right here. We have a setup for processing ores. So you put an ore chunk in here, and then the item transporter goes to this entangled block, which is entangled to the block up there, which is our enriching factory. And then the output of that gets entangled over to our elite smelting factory, right? So, um, you check this out real quick, make sure everything is still configured. Yep, so we're inputting on the top, outputting on the back, and then this guy is inputting on the top and outputting from the back, or inputting from the front, rather, and outputting to the back. And on the back, we have an importer grabbing whole stacks at a time. We're also providing power to these machines, so these guys are literally just floating here, and that's because I wanted to put a grid right in the middle. It felt like it would fit really nicely, and I'm pretty happy with that decision. So yeah, overall, it's been kind of a busy couple of days trying to get this area nice and cleaned out, but it has made a lot of room available to us over here on this side of the world because now this build is almost completely empty. You come in and there's not really a whole lot going on. Don't worry about that. What we're going to end up having is all of these storage drawers in here are going to be evicted. They're going to be moved out here. We're going to have like one or two relatively large storage walls, maybe this one here and another pair here and here which will be walls of storage drawers. And then these two little nooks on the sides will be used for auto-crafting stuff. Uh, not necessarily machine auto-crafting, although it can be done for that, um, but more like the, the crafting, uh, well, the crafters, the crafters from industrial and uh, refined storage, because those guys, uh, they can take up some space. Now, there are some crafter tiers as well, so we can start to kind of consolidate our crafters a little bit, because uh, these will hold 45 patterns instead of just 27, instead of just 9, which is what the default is. So already we can triple them, and then we can add, what is it, two more rows, and then we have up to 63, which is 7, 6, 8, 6, 7. I can't remember off the top of my head. So yeah, it just it keeps getting crazier and crazier. And this is just a 9x9 nine nine grid of crafting slots. So yeah, it gets pretty nuts with extra storage, but it'll be very fun once we get that far. So yeah, that pretty much catches you up on what all I have done in between episodes and streams and other means of publishing. Uh, and let me know in the comments. I know it's been a while since I may have asked... Um, what do you think of this split combo of streaming and recording? If you'd prefer that I did everything on camera, I'd be glad to. But that means you're going to have a lot of episodes where I can only do one or two things because I had to build in that episode or I had to spend a lot of time doing some kind of boring stuff that I just, I since I've mentioned in the very beginning of this episode or the very beginning of this live stream words, not live stream, not episodes. Since I mentioned at the very beginning of the series that I don't have a lot of time to edit these videos, I don't do a lot of editing. I mostly just slap them everything together, add music where needed, 
um, and add transitions across the board. So uh, with that said, I do have some stuff planned. So today, I want to improve our power generation. As you no doubt can probably tell, I am not doing a lot for my power right now. The power generation is this. This is the power gen. We're just producing lava from the nether, and we're coming over here, and we're wasting our lava for, what, 400 RF per tick across two of these. So that's 800 RF per tick, and that is a lot. Don't get me wrong. That is quite a significant amount. But there are better means by which we can produce power. So I wanted to get into that today. And what I'm going to do in order to do that is dig out a nice little basement. So I'm going to get everything ready for that. We're going to make some elevators. I believe I should have two already, and I'll make two more because I want everything to be nice and symmetrical. And what I'm going to do is go into a nice little build montage with some nice music, and we're going to build out a nice, or dig out a nice big basement. I don't normally like to put everything in a basement, but since it is power gen and I'm trying to um, kind of make some progress right now, until I build something else uh, that it's more fitting for, I think that'll be the plan. I will eventually build a nice big concrete structure uh, for housing all of our energy production and even some storage for energy, but, you know, right now we're still early game, so I'm going to dig out a nice little area and I'll be right back. Okay, so I realized after I built out this entire basement, which we're probably still going to use for something, uh, that it's entirely unnecessary if we were to take the compact machines route, which I think would be really cool to do. So if we take a look at maybe the large compact machine, which I cannot remember, um, there's, uh, is there a guide? I can't even remember if there's a guide. And is there not a, okay, so there's not a tunnel, but we can work around that part. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, a guide for this or not, but we have gotten ever so slightly. Oh, there is. Okay. Um, right click. Perfect. Okay. Uh, duh, 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 various sizes, tunnels, connect, you can enter a compact machine, look up. Okay. So the recipes for this are not too terrible. It's, uh, the compact machine wall, which is crafted in a couple of different ways. Um, clearly this is probably our best bet. Uh, and so we'll want to make a handful of these. If this makes one, then we're going to need a lot of them, actually. Uh, so, taking a look, that's going to need a block of ender. I don't even know which one. Okay, that one works. We'll do this. That'll get us a handful of these. Um, and they can be uncrafted if you were ever concerned about that. Uh, and then we need our refined obsidian. I don't know that I can turn this back into... Dust. Oh, I can. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So we will take this over to our crusher. And then we'll take it over here to our enriching factory. And then we'll take it over here to our infusing factory. And that's it. That's all we could afford. That's still quite a bit. I'm just a little surprised, I guess. Uh, we'll grab those and go ahead and work on the large machine wall. That got us 52. So here's what I don't know. I'm assuming if they range from 3x3 to 13x13, then this, if I go back to this, this is 3x3, 5x5, 7x7, and then 9x9. And that's 9x9x9 on top of that. So... What I was thinking is, rather than putting this here, since we're going to have to do ender power anyways, we could put it over here instead. Um, maybe just put it somewhere kind of deep-ish. Uh, so let's grab an elevator. We'll do two of these again. And I'll dig out a little something-something, probably like here. And we'll just kind of go for it, see what I can get worked out. Put that there. And then we'll just dig down quite a ways. Because if this needs to be 9x9, nine nine, then it's going to have to be pretty big. Okay, so let's grab our mining gadget. Go ahead and toss a couple of these things, and then if we come down here, we can do Silk Touch and Precision Mode.
And I'm actually going to give myself some room here. So we'll do that. Give myself a nice little one block of space. And then we'll do the same over here. Now I'm pretty sure these need to be hollow. It doesn't really make sense for them not to be. But I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. So let me finish digging out this room and I will be back. And that should do it. So now if I run back over here, the reason that this is indented, you'll see, is that I plan on offsetting the height a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and toss this stuff back in here and then I can get started on getting our building gadget out. This guy will let us build pretty quickly and I'm hoping uh, no, I'm actually, there's no way I'm going to have enough. So we're going to need to make more compact machine blocks, uh, which means we're going to need more refined obsidian. Because if this is 9x9, nine nine, like I assume it is, then that means we're going to need uh, 81 times 6, which is a significant amount more than just 52. <laughs> so in fact, uh, let me let me calculate this out real quick and see uh, what I'm going to need. And, oh, I actually had a lot of enriched obsidian. So let me do that and some ender blocks that should help a little bit okay yeah that helps very slightly so yeah let me uh let me see what i can do here and i will be right back okay so i discovered something pretty cool so it turns out that these guys don't actually have to be as big as you would expect so this is a compact machine frame in a 5x5x5 five by five by five hollow, and when I right-click on it, I end up inside of a 9x9x9. Nine by nine by nine. Well, it, it's 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine inside. So this is kind of strange. It's not what I was expecting by any means. So what I'm going to do is just yoink this. Uh, it looks like these seem to store a lot of data that they probably shouldn't. Anyways, uh, fascinating. So I'm going to need a lot of that material that I just dug up back. So let's grab maybe some uh, some of the weathered limestone. We'll just fill it in with that for the most part. It's a little bit easier that way. So then we'll come down here. Like I said, it turns out we only really need a 5x5x5. Five by five by five. So if we do uh, the weathered limestone... And I change this to a surface with a 10 block range. We can fill this in pretty sig significantly, rather. Uh, we can do this. I'm not really worried about these light blocks accidentally staying. Um, I'll go ahead and break them just to make sure, but I'm not offended by the ones that were already in there. So if we need it to be a 5x5x5, five by five by five, we already have 6. So if I do this, that'll bring it down to 5. And then if I do following, this brings it down to what, six by six by six or seven? Ah, right. Uh, let's try that, that, and that. And there we go, five by five by five. And it is probably impossibly dark in here. So what I can do is take you down to a one by one. Now we get a little light block for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is place these guys down. As it turns out, there is no easy way to like build these guys out, unfortunately. You have to place down every, each and every single block just as a result of them being pseudo-tile entities of sorts. They're kind of strange, I will admit. Right, and then we do actually need the corners. Wait, no, these are the corners. Yeah, never mind. So we will need that. And then that. 
And so now if I right click with my personal shrinking device, we're in just like that. And if I right click out, it takes us right back out where we were, um, which is ideal. I was a little afraid of that not working the way I was expecting. I'm gonna grab a torch or two for that area real quick. And then we can get started with the crafting that we're gonna need to do. So we're gonna need the following. We're gonna need torches here, beautiful. And oh, right, we need to, uh, let's take you and do build to me. Now it's completely filled. So we're gonna need a handful of different machines and uh, sort of what we're gonna do will be explained this process of the machines that I've bookmarked in JEI that I can kind of go through as we go. So we will have the following. We will take melon, which will be grown via four different cloches. These garden cloches can grow melon. So if I take these through here, this will create two melon blocks. These two melon blocks can be split up using the multi-servo press and the metal press on mold unpacking to create nine melon slices, which is very efficient. It's the most efficient way to get melon slices from melon blocks. You can see this will do nine, uh, just the same as this will, but this can't be automated. Just the same that this will. This will give you eight in a seed, which isn't as helpful, and this is just a, a tooltip. So we'll do the multi-servo press to break them down. And then we can use the melons from the multi-servo press, right? So you're following, we're gonna do this. Multi-servo press, will get these. We can use these and crush them into biofuel. Biofuel can then be processed through the PRC with hydrogen, which is done via the electrolytic separator to produce ethylene. And the ethylene can be burned in up to, the ethylene produced can be burned in up to six gas burning generators. So every single mechanism machine we're going to have, we will need to upgrade completely to the max with six upgrades for both, or eight upgrades for both speed and energy. Um, but we won't have to muffle any of them because they're not even going to be in our dimension. On top of that, we're going to have to use ender gates as our power input, or we can use uh, probably the ender cell would probably be the smartest. That way it's very clear that these are inputs of power and not outputs of power. Um, but it's going to take a minute to get everything here crafted, as I'm sure you can probably imagine. So let's see how long this will take. I'll probably do just a really quick, quiet crafting montage to get everything crafted, because this is going to be a pain. So give me just a sec. Okay, so I do have to apologize, but due to a couple of recording errors, I did have to basically tear everything down and set everything back up again. So I thought I would walk you through that experience and kind of give you an idea of the route that I ended up taking for setting this up, right? Okay, so getting started here, we know that we're going to want our sink to produce water, correct, right? So we're going to want the sink and our garden cloches both facing into... Um, some method right of storing things so we have a where is it here we go a framed drawer which stores whole pumpkins and whole melon seeds you can see we have a 
large amount of both, and this is a voiding drawer. This is such that when this fills up, we don't end up with such an excess that we literally cannot handle it, have no way of figuring anything out from that point on, uh, and, and cause a major mess, essentially. So this helps us out, because um, these seeds will not just magically go away as we grow things, so it will cause a backlog and stuff stuff up. So, uh, from there, we're going to want our multi-servo press to pull in pumpkins, which you can see it was already configured to do, and using the metal press unmold, or a mold for unpacking, it's going to turn the melons into melon slices. So that takes care of that. The melon slices need to be crushed in a crusher, which you can see it has already stored its inventory here. So you're gonna see that's just gonna go right in, and if I took this out, you'll see, again, we don't have any power hooked up, but it's gonna get everything started. This is going to produce for us biofuel. Now biofuel can go directly into a PRC, a pressurized reaction chamber. And you can see if I remove this, it'll start to fill up here as well. The PRC will want hydrogen and biofuel to produce ethylene, and the hydrogen has to come from somewhere. That somewhere is our electrolytic separator, which will allow for water to be separated into its two components, H and O. So the oxygen here we're just dumping. We don't need to store the oxygen, but the hydrogen will go directly into this guy. So now that we have that part of it done, right, the only thing left is to use our ethylene to create power using the gas burning generators. So if I grab these basic pressurized tubes, I can set them up like so, uh, and you can see these are filled um, to allow for power transference. And if I were to do something like this, it's going to fill up our ender cell um, on hopefully all sides, at least as far as I can tell. Clearly, there are a couple of components here missing, so let's get those knocked out. We're going to need water for a lot of these different areas and devices, so let's go ahead and figure that out. We're going to need water for these two. And then for... Uh, I think this is how I had it before. These two can allow for water here on these lower levels, and then uh, these two need water on their undersides, like so. And then if I put you down, grab our morphing tool, and put you into extract mode, we should see water going into here. We can now begin to plant our pumpkin, oh, sorry, our melon. There we go. I promise I've done this before. Uh, and we will have power using ender gates, because it's just the easiest. Just like that. So this is the super clean setup that I used, and you can see we have tons of room to replicate this on the other side. Now, if you wanted to do the math, and the math is kind of complicated, only because there are a lot of things going on here that make it kind of difficult to figure out exactly where the energy is being burned where the energy is being created, but roughly, the rough number I have for this system is about 16,000 RF per tick, uh, approximately, because again, you've got to consider we're using a whole bunch of power over here, uh, just in these three machines alone, and then these aren't perfect, sometimes they don't burn or don't produce the same amount just because of um, the burn rate being different, from what I can tell, it's it's kind of, it's kind of weird, but um, definitely nothing that, that cannot be calculated over time we just need to kind of get a better setup for for doing exactly that so yeah uh with that i hope you enjoyed the episode again sorry for the complications with the recordings it was completely my fault it was just a lot of issues on my end with with uh the the stream labs recording not working exactly as expected so anyways i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you in the next one